Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the DLAW conference for 2021. I'm Nuru. And I'm Katie. Today we're here to celebrate the work of all our digital leaders of learning across Glasgow. It's been an enormously challenging year and we're so proud of the work of all our teachers and young people in pulling up through these difficult times and making Glasgow one of the best places in the world to learn. In the midst of it all, we've seen so many changes in how education is delivered to us. The importance of digital technology has never been more clear than it is today. Whether we're learning at home or remotely or part of a blended class, or even just submitting our work in new digital format, we can see that learning is now fully part of the digital revolution. In Glasgow, we are delighted to be at the forefront of these changes, ensuring that as we change and adopt new technologies, we do it in a way which makes learning better for all of us. Today, as well as celebrating the work of all our digital leaders of learning, we are looking at the importance of creativity and learning. You will hear from senior researchers from Gallup who have recently conducted a study into how important creativity is. In addition, you will also hear from Apple who create technology which allows us to learn in innovative and creative ways. Lastly, you'll have a chance to see some great examples from across our city of how technology and creativity are coming together and making learning come to life. We hope you have an amazing day and find inspiration for the days, months and years ahead. We begin with a welcome and introduction from Maureen McKenna. So welcome Maureen, nice to, nice to see you and thank you so much for opening the DLO conference for 2021. I'm delighted uh, and I'm just so delighted that we're able to have another conference because it's such an important part of our learning now, isn't it? You know, the digital leaders of learning have, have proved their worth. They have been absolutely invaluable. Who would have thought when we started on this journey um, you know, a few years ago, and we decided that we wanted a, a digital leader of learning in every school and nursery, that they would have been so important for us. And the work that they have done, you know, through our two lockdowns, through supporting um, young people and staff with the, their disrupted learning, it has just been invaluable. So for all the DLOLs that are listening today, thank you. Thank you so much um, for the work that you have done um, throughout the last 18 months and indeed continue to do because now we're absolutely on a, a journey that we need to continue. And it has been, it's been an unprecedented time really, hasn't it? And some of the stories that we're now starting to see coming out of Glasgow about the impact of some of the work that the DLOs have done and, and also some of the, 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 the work that schools are doing around technology is, is really quite exciting. Oh, it's, it's more than exciting. It, it's absolutely transformational. Um, you know, we've still got a way to go. And, and when we started on the journey with the iPads, you know, we knew it was going to be long and we, we wanted to build people's confidence and capacity. But if there are positives that have come out from the, the last 18 months, it's the pace at which we have been able to move. And, and teachers have grasped the technology, seen the value of it. And oh my goodness, I mean, the, the stories coming out across the city are just amazing. Young people using their learning, using their digital learning in such different ways. And, and teachers who, you know, they're not, they're not saying that iPads are the answer to the universe, but my goodness, are they expanding our young people's horizons and extending the, the different approaches to learning and teaching. So really good enhanced pedagogical skills, but whoa, much more to do. And I, I, I guess even just talking to you, Morning, it seems that, you, that the thing that really kind of you're passionate about is the end result, the impact on the young person or the, you know, the, the difference it's making in the real world to real people. Absolutely. I mean, what, everybody now needs digital skills. Yeah. Everybody. My mum needs digital skills. Yeah. So it's absolutely crucial that from the earliest age we are building those skills in. And that's why in the, in the framework that we are out talking about just now with wellbeing and learning, we've drawn from Michael Fullen's work. And there's a lot of good international work on the go just now. And we've drawn from his, his work looking at what are the drivers that are needed to really take us um, as the pandemic, well, you know, we're still in it, as we're coming through this, um, to really take those skills forward. And we know those four drivers digital competence is an absolutely key one, but equally is learning partnerships. So, we, you know, we know schools on their own can't do it. 
So how can we use that digital competence to enhance with our learning partnerships? And of course, you know, the support that we've had from our partners through Apple Education, you know, has been invaluable. Um, and, and that, you know, we need to continue that because this is, I think, a never ending journey. And it is at the end of the day about young people's well-being and their learning being intrinsically linked together and digital underpins lots of that. And I, I think it's great to see Glasgow as Scotland's biggest city playing a really lead role in, in what does good look like, what does in this kind of new world and, and, and as some of these key priorities become much more embedded into our curriculum and the way we teach in classroom, it's great to see Glasgow kind of leading the way. Well, of course, of that, I love Glasgow. You would say that. <laughs> I love Glasgow, and of course, I'm going to say we are leading the way, and so we should lead the way. We are Scotland's largest education authority, and I'm immensely proud of lots of the work that goes on in our city. What our teachers do day in, day out with our young people is extraordinary, and their thirst um, to, to continue to learn more themselves so that they can improve using education to improve the outcomes for our children and young people. It is immeasurable, you just can't buy it. But um, Glasgow will continue to lead. Yeah. Um, and I know that today is just another little bit on the journey where we are sharing practice and building and continuing to build that confidence and enthusiasm. And we need each of the DLOs listening today to continue to be as enthusiastic and to show those leadership skills in their schools and in their nurseries if we are to continue to improve. Thank you so much, Martin. We've got a really exciting agenda lined up for everybody today. So what, what do you, last words or what do you hope that our DLOs get out of, of today and take into Well, I don't think it's a hope. I think I know. I think I know that they will gain more confidence um, in their own ability to lead learning within their schools and nurseries. Because we know that not everybody um, in the school or the nursery may feel as confident as they do about digital learning. But that's their role. That's their role is to provide that support and to show others how digital learning can transform children and young people's lives. Even in the smallest way in our nurseries, digital can change children's lives. So thank you, um, all you little DLOs out there for the work that you do. Keep it going and know that you're making a difference to Glasgow's families. Thank you. Thanks, Marie. First up today, we're delighted to welcome Paul Downey from West OS, who's going to talk to us about some of the great content that's available for teachers and DLOs in Glasgow through the West OS online partnership. Good afternoon colleagues. As our digital leaders are learning, I'd hope that you're all now well aware of West OS and how to add the tile to your launchpad on Glow. The challenge we'd like to set you now is to ensure that all staff and possibly more importantly our young people also know how to access West OS and ensure that they have it added to their Glow launchpad. As Jerry Lyons stated during the recent in-service day in Glasgow, West OS is not just a COVID artefact and we're working with colleagues across Glasgow and indeed Scotland to continue to develop and enhance this resource to support young people, not just during times of isolation, but at all times. Whether that's supporting homework, revision, preparation for assessment or developing them as independent learners. Over the past couple of weeks, I've had the privilege of working directly with about 250 young people across five of our secondary schools who have been targeted as part of our work with the Glasgow University tutoring pilot this session. 76.5% of those young people having used West OS found it to be useful or very useful to their learning. And some of their feedback can be seen on the left hand side of the screen this time. On the right hand side, you'll see some feedback from the thousands of colleagues who joined our online West OS session in the recent in-service day. But 84.9% of our teachers told us that they found West OS to be useful. We know that we've much work left to do to further develop West OS, but we're really buoyed by what both pupils and staff are telling us. At a national level, we've support to further develop West OS as the recorded part of the national e-learning offer alongside eSchool, who of course provide the live element 
of that offer currently. And I'd also encourage you to ensure that your colleagues and young people are aware of the study support and offer in the senior phase and there are other offers to support the BGE at all levels. Finally, let me say this. What is most clear is that regardless of the digital tools or resources being used, it's the pedagogy that goes with it that makes the biggest difference to our young people. And as our digital leaders of learning, we're looking to you to utilise these resources and model how they can be used. We want you to try them out, to share that with both your colleagues and with ourselves. We want to know what works well and what doesn't work so well. We want to know how we can improve West OS and we want you and your colleagues to support us in improving it. You can do that by providing feedback and should you or someone you know feel that you can produce something that would improve the offer, then we've got funding available to commission that work. You're here this afternoon because you're highly skilled professional teachers with a passion for digital technology. And we're incredibly excited to hear your ideas on how West OS can be used to support learning in school and out of school. So go and try it out. Encourage your colleagues to do the same and let us know how you get on. And please make a point of regularly reminding our young people about the resources that are available to them online, such as eSchool, Scholar, Twig, and of course, West OS. printer journey developing skills in problem solving computational thinking skills for the world of work stem learning and creativity on launch we set a school-wide challenge to design a 3d model that solves an everyday problem our digital developers narrowed it down and put it out for a vote the winner was identified and it was to be the first thing printed off pupils were introduced to cad and the workplaces that use it winner of the pupil vote was the easy reader while the winner of the staff vote was a self-affirmation paperweight. Here is the final product and we look forward to exploring other applications for the 3D printer. At Gown Bank, teachers use their iPads to support children's needs and individual interests. And we know that some of our children can find the school day tricky. One of our P2 teachers worked with a child who had created her own robot to engage her in familiar aspects of the school day using iMovie. <laughs> Charlene's Primary School, we are one of the few schools in Glasgow to receive a Digital Schools Reward. As we are a digital school, we also have an elite group of people who are digital ambassadors. Our digital ambassadors help run our lunchtime coding club. Using the Clips app on the iPad has allowed teachers to make a bank of demonstration videos. Clips allows us to add prompts, arrows, stickers and emojis to enhance the understanding of our demo videos. Videos are shared with young people via Shobi. This allows the young person to pause, rewind or fast forward the steps as required. 
The work is submitted as a digital image. Teachers can draw directly onto the image and can leave written or voice note feedback which moves the learning forward. The impact this has on attainment can clearly be seen in the beautiful quality of home learning that we receive. Glendale Gaelic School, Boonskull Gaelic Ground Dow. We use Sing Studio to create this stop motion scene. Zing helped us be creative. Hi, welcome, welcome to some Bended Experiment School, Antia and Carson, and together we're part of the digital explorers. In our school, we use Seesaw both in class and out of our class for homework. The infants we use Seesaw to share story maps. Here is an example of a primary one sharing a story map. In the time, there was three wiffle pegs. They, they, decided, they decided to leave the house and make up. We also use Seesaw to share our work with our families. So we're delighted that two of our schools in Glasgow, Castle Milk High School and John Paul II Primary School, have been accredited as Apple Distinguished Schools in the most recent accreditation. This means that they have become part of a global community of some of the world's best and most innovative schools and are able to share the great work that's taking place in their own schools and also learn from some of the amazing things that are taking place in other Apple Distinguished Schools around the world. We're delighted with these awards. We congratulate the schools hugely and you'll hear from both of them in just a minute. And we're probably most pleased because it gives a chance for Glasgow as an outward facing city to showcase some of the amazing things that are taking place across our city for schools around the world to see. We look forward to other schools in our city becoming Apple Distinguished Schools in the days, weeks and months ahead. And we know that Apple are working very closely with us to help us achieve this aim. Hello, my name is Lynn Gibson and I am the head teacher of Castlemilk High School. I am passionate about the promotion of technology and equipping our young people with the digital skills required for this ever-changing world. Our school's vision is that the iPads will be at the centre of all learning. We wish for them to empower staff, young people and our community, thus ensuring connectivity for all. Our school has a robust and successful learning and teaching policy. More and more, the iPad is at the core of the policy, enhancing learning and teaching and transforming experiences. The iPad has also enabled us to fully connect with young people and support their well-being and learning even when they are not in school. The iPads have reduced our workload and our photocopying bill has almost halved. When applying for Apple Distinguished Skills status, we collated all of the good practice taking place in the school and used it to complete the Apple Distinguished Skills application. The application is the end result of all your hard work and efforts to make a difference using Apple technology. Our motto at Castle Milk High School is nothing but the best will do and we firmly believe that iPads are enabling us to provide highly effective learning and teaching, to support well-being and to deliver the best possible outcomes for our young people. The initial step in the application process to become an Apple Distinguished School for us began in February and closed in early March. This step involved us submitting an application request that asked us to focus on three main areas which were vision, learning and success. Under each of these headings, Apple were asking us to tell them what each of these three areas looked like here at Castle Milk High. Sharing our vision on the application request was straightforward. We outlined what our school's aspiration for learning with the technology is and briefly explained how the different members of our school community bought into that vision. In the second section on learning, 
we outlined a couple of examples on how we as a school were using the iPads to support the learning and teaching of our young people and also how we were using iPads creatively to support other key priorities within our school such as our Developing the Young Workforce programme. The third section of this initial application involved us outlining the impact and successes that we had enjoyed since using the technology. Although on the actual forum you are limited to a maximum word count of 300 words for each section, you are required to attach evidence to support what you say within each section. This was particularly useful as it allowed your scope to expand upon the points you were making within your application. The evidence that we used in support of our, our application was a variety of PDF, video clips and links to our website, Twitter and Facebook accounts, so it's not a cumbersome process. At this point, the application request was submitted to Apple for them to review and after a few weeks, we then received a formal invitation from Apple to complete the application process. The next step of that process was to share our success and our story by providing a two-page summary. We came together to take forward our Apple's Distinguished School application and we had a cross-curricular digital working group to help with this application. The working group initially reflected on our workflow around the school. As a school, we use the Shobi application. Every pupil, every teacher, every lesson in our school community takes place on Shobi. We then started to think about the creativity and the skills building that goes on in the school too. We had some fantastic examples of where Book Creator was being used, iMovie was being used across many subject areas in the school, GarageBand was being implemented to create podcasts for revision purposes in social subjects and in English. Even during lockdown, we had Swift Playground being used so that our pupils could still do some coding. Out with the classroom, our youth workers have fully used our iPads and Shobi. Uh, that made sure they could communicate with our young people every single day. And our DYW team has found the iPad and its use absolutely invaluable. They communicate with all of our young people through Shobi. They conduct interviews, college interviews through Teams. They let, it allows our young people to submit applications so that our DYW team can have a quick look over their applications before they're submitted. Hello, my name is Chris Devlin and I'm the head teacher of St John Paul II Primary School in Castlemilk. We are absolutely delighted to be awarded the first Apple Distinguished Primary School in Scotland. The journey towards Apple Distinguished School started a number of years before I took over my headship here. Hi, my name is Damien Nicholas. I'm the deputy head teacher here at St John Paul II Primary School. Digital learning has been a key component of our school improvement plan for the last five years. And throughout our journey, our well-trained school staff have been working very hard to transform pedagogy in our classrooms. The use of digital technologies has significantly enhanced learning and teaching in our classrooms. This is having a profoundly positive effect on our learners and is being further enhanced through all the great work that's been carried out by our digital leader of learning and our school's digital leaders. Recognition for our efforts and endeavours has been evidenced in our Digital School Award of 2018 and a successful Scotland Education Award for Digital Learning and Teaching in 2019. We've worked very closely with several key partners to lead improvements at the school and have been well supported by our colleagues at Apple. In particular, a big thanks has to go to Jenny Robertson, who set us on the path towards achieving Apple Distinguished School status. Hi, my name is Alice Quinn and I'm the Digital Leader of Learning at St John Paul II Primary School. I would like to share some of the success of our Apple Distinguished Schools application with you and explain how we went on to achieve this as the first primary school in the whole of Scotland. As previously mentioned, we were encouraged to apply to Apple Distinguished Schools due to our excellent practice in learning and teaching through digital technology. As a school, we focused on how digital technology can be used to enhance and improve pedagogy and showed this through video and photographic evidence. 
This was compiled in a pages document which was split into different subheadings covering our school's context, our vision, our learning and teaching, our successes and then our hopes for the future. Pupil-led initiatives was a key component in our application and we spoke about the selection process of our digital leaders through interviews and then how they work in our school with pupils and staff. We also spoke about the range of core apps we have focused on with teachers through training days and CPD activities, which were Book Creator, Green Screen, iMovie, Sphero Edu and Teams. We felt that having five central apps was more beneficial to the learning and teaching pedagogy as teachers could transfer newly learned skills across the curriculum and pupils could become quickly familiar with these tools. We also spoke about the process of creating our inspired learning space where we turned our old ICT suite into an environment where children could learn in a creative space using a variety of technology including filming equipment, spheros, 3D printers and robotics. Classes use this space on a weekly basis and it gives both teachers and learners the opportunity to improve pedagogy on another level. Finally, we spoke about the future of our award and the opportunity to extend our international links that were originally started through our Erasmus Plus projects. The Apple Distinguished School setup will give us the opportunity to broaden these links, thus enhancing our international pedagogy completely. Our projects could not have been as so successful without the use of Apple technology. After submitting the application, Apple reads and review it before telling you whether or not you have been successful. Your Apple Distinguished School recognition lasts for three years before you are given the opportunity to apply again. It gives you the chance to link with other Apple Distinguished Schools worldwide and to share good practice as well as collaborate with other pupils and professionals across the globe. My role is to prepare my learners for tomorrow, so I collaborate with my colleagues and together we imagine new ways of solving problems. I want to share the best experiences I can to inspire excellence, grow curiosity, make critical thinkers and produce problem solvers. My creative classroom involves me engaging in professional learning and keeping up to date with new technology. I achieve this by using a range of apps to inspire learning and teaching. Planning and organisation is more streamlined. Children are engaged with a plethora of different learning experiences and there are higher levels of pupil engagement. There are more opportunities for children to display their own creativity Pupils are continually solving their own problems and developing their digital literacy for tomorrow's world. School can look the same. 
we still line up. We still follow bells. But once inside, things can look a little bit different. My role was to be ready to learn, fully charred learning slipped, open to ideas, suggestions, cultures and creations which exist in the real world and outside my classroom. How do I achieve that? Choosing what I learn in class is important to me. I want to learn about the world I live in. I want to try new ways of doing things. We are learning about climate change and all the effects it has on us and our planet. And we can collaborate on projects together. My teacher can leave instructions on how to do my work. Partitioning big numbers is made easy using markup. I can make digital posters about world religions and cultures. I relax by drawing and designing new trainers. I can make brain and body movies for STEM. I enjoy making new music using loops to match up beat drops. We can create movies by app smashing our ideas and creativity together. I can design solutions for driverless cars. I can create code for Angry Birds 7. Slow-mo helps us to understand gravity and sea force. AR allows us to see the outside world when it's not even there. I can access my homework easily. And my parents can get instant updates on my achievements. I am more focused on my work because there are so many different apps and websites to help me learn. You can organise your work and find what you need and want really, really quickly. I don't need to look for other resources. Everything I need to learn can be found in one place. We can choose how we want to learn and which app we will use to display our understanding and it's a lot more fun. I like to do home learning. I get to do sums. I get to circle numbers. I get to leave my voice. I get to do fun activities. Using Seesaw is a safe environment to learn. Pupil login and parent logins make things easy. The Seesaw app allows me to interact with teachers and to see learning updates and get in touch with concerns. It's an engaging way for us both to take part in home learning and we find learning together really fun. We also help with anyone who's struggling online, like cyberbullying or sexual.
I'm going to four use video to film their PE lesson. Then Clips Keynote and iMovie were used to enable pupils to write a more detailed recount. We also used higher order thinking questions to help the children think more deeply. So we've coded them to when you shake them, they'll randomly generate a number between six, uh, one and six. And uh, we've tested their results by using actual dice. we coding with micro bits. And we were gonna do make, making the micro bits a dice. And so we tested it with the actual dice and it was pretty close. The introduction of the Seesaw app at the Glasgow Gaelic Nursery has had a positive impact on the sharing of learning and communication between nursery and home. Seesaw was used to enhance Gaelic language learning. Videos for songs and rhymes were provided to support the use of Gaelic at home. These connections also ensured the transition back to nursery after the second lockdown was smoother due to the level of engagement, overall benefiting the needs of the children in our care. Seesaw has supported raising attainment by tracking experiences and outcomes individual children have been working on through the skills section. It also allows us to monitor each child's individual progress. Um, um, get it helping. Hey, give me a break! Hi, my name is Chelsea. And I'm Zach. And, and we're, we're from Mount Vernon Primary School. During art lessons, we used an iPad creatively to capture different images around the school. It was great to do something different and help them become more confident using the iPads. We learned how to fill the frame, focus using macro and change the orientation of the images. We celebrated all learning by organising an exhibition and invited the whole school. It was really good fun. We were also able to use Seesaw to share our learning with our families. It's amazing to see these showcase videos that have been sent in by DLOLs across the city. One of the apps that has made the most impact in the creative classroom in Glasgow over the past months and years is Shobi. It's a core part now of the workflow in creative classrooms across Glasgow and has been funded directly by the local authority for all schools in the city for the next two years. So it is a foundational part of what we look 
forward to seeing going forward in our schools. Today we have Abdul Chohan, VP of Learning at Shobi, to talk to us about the potential impact that the app can make in our classrooms. Hi everyone, my name is Abdul Chohan and I am the Vice President of Learning at Shobi. I am delighted to be presenting at the conference today. I have had significant involvement with a number of schools in Glasgow and I have seen the amazing work that you have done uh, in your schools with respect to integrating technology with learning. I think it's really important that for a digital strategy to be successful, we have a consistent approach to learning. I have always believed that good schools are consistent and outstanding schools are consistently good. And one of the key elements um, that we really have to think about is what makes a consistently good learning experience. What is the minimum expectation that we should expect we should be expecting in our classrooms for for technology to have um, continued and significant impact on learning outcomes. And from that, I think the the idea of non-negotiables, knowing what the minimum expectations are in terms of how we use technology for learning becomes quite key. We know that assessment and feedback and the way in which this can be delivered in classrooms is can be significantly different. Um, using tools like Shobi, the ability to use digital voice and verbal feedback, the ability to do screen recording, the ability to do learning checks with real-time data using Socrative becomes really powerful. It begins to change the way in which we have traditionally taught. It allows teachers to do things that they could not do in the past. And of course, um, the, the, the significant impact of that is um, on children and their outcomes. Using tools that are innovative, like Shobi, allows us to build some amazing relationships. And you will all have examples. Um, certainly those of you that have used verbal feedback uh, as part of Shobi's tools, you will have experience, uh, certain, possibly during COVID and lockdown, of, be, of um, being able to maintain those relationships. Um, I recently spoke to a teacher at a Glasgow school and um, they talked about having a 24-hour wraparound service. That doesn't mean that the teachers are available for, for, for the students 24 hours, but the technology does allow students to ask questions when they pop up in their mind. It, asks, it allows them to ask for help when they need it. And sometimes that is educational and academic, but sometimes it's more than that as well. Um, I think Glasgow's framework for well-being and learning um, is going to be essential and technology will play a significant role as part of that. I know that um, Glasgow has had, has, for a number of years, has had an ambition uh, to be a nurturing city and being able to use technology to embed these nurturing approaches in classrooms uh, and playrooms across the city is going to be key. Technology is at its best when it's invisible, when it empowers teachers to be able to do things that they were not able to do in the past. And actually, technology is really powerful when it brings our human qualities together. The ability to speak, the ability to speak like this, even though I'm physically not there, becomes really quite powerful. So I hope that this is the start of something amazing. You've certainly set the bar for the world. Um, I know certainly from my travels, and I'm actually sat in Dubai at this moment in time, uh, speaking to you and recording this. Um, and just yesterday, I was giving examples uh, from Castle Milk High School, sorry, um, just singling out a school there, um, to a school over here in the way in which um, their approaches to teaching and learning has changed and um, using specific policies, um, to actually enforce and make sure that children uh, actually get the best possible outcomes. So, fantastic um, opportunity to really continue uh, setting uh, and increasing um, the bar in education and certainly with the use of, of technology. Um, and I hope and I wish um, that in the coming years we will see the way in which you set examples as DLOGs in the way in which you use technology for learning um, also extends itself 
into the framework for well-being and learning as well. Thank you very much. Wonderful to speak to you again. Hi from Lockend Community High School. Here is a quick snippet from our Shobi marking policy. Um, just a quick look at the policy and then on to how it's applied in some students' work. Thanks very much. St Timothy's experience of Shobe. Our journey. We set up a pilot study with a small sample of classes. We agreed priorities, timeline and with certain negotiables and non-negotiables. However, when we were only two weeks into our study, Covid hit. Schools went into lockdown and we were left with Shobe as our sole mode of teaching. Luckily, all staff had received training. I found Shobe simple and easy to adapt to, especially against the backdrop of having to go to digital learning quite quickly. Other staff said, Pupils benefited from video catch-up, verbal feedback had more impact, pupils were able to share ideas and collaborate, there was an increase in parental engagement, video lessons helped, and pupils were able to turn and work in a range of media. To support reflective practice, we asked our parents what they thought. One parent commented on the impact that a video tutorial had on her and her son. The overriding response was positive, with parents happy that there was still a connection with the school, that the children could reach out to their teacher for support, and the face-to-face -face contact with teachers had a positive impact on their child's experience. In the Holyrood Art and Design Department, we love using Shobi. Today I'm going to talk to you about how we've used Shobi to enhance learning and teaching across all our year groups and to help us organise all of our home learning resources and class resources. By creating a class in which you have folders for each of the upcoming terms, August to October week, October week to Christmas, and then January to Easter. Within each of these terms, the academic weeks you wish home learning to be completed in can be set as assignments with due dates to match. We created this blank dates class for the academic term 2021. By going to class settings and then copy class, we created six different copies for each year group, S1 through to S6. In the BGE, each of our home learning tasks has a short video modelling the techniques. Each video was uploaded to the correct week. At this point, the S1 to S3 class codes were shared with all staff in the department. This allowed them to join as co-teachers. Once they were in as co-teachers, using the class settings copy class option allows them to create as many copies of the template class that they needed for this year's timetable. The advantages for staff have been that all this year's home learning and due dates are already uploaded and set, which has saved a huge amount of time. The template classes can also be simply adapted to next year's dates and due dates without having to re-upload videos and materials. Something that worked well for us was naming the template classes using emojis. That way it clearly stands out from the copied versions you have made. Once you've copied all you need, you can simply archive the class and it's stored safely there. In the advantages for young people, all of the year's home learning and due dates are already uploaded. So a clear overview is provided, encouraging them to plan and take responsibility for their learning. Videos are watched in the app, so no need to download or store anywhere else. By returning the work via the Shobi app as a digital photo, it allows staff to write directly onto the image or to give verbal voice note feedback directly onto the work. This is because of the excellent selection of tools available in the Shobi app for feedback. Thanks to all of the feedback tools that Shobi has, we can provide feedback that moves the learning forward. And of course, that has raised the attainment for all our young people. In the senior phase, we also combine Shobi with the Socrative app. You can add a quiz and it links directly to the pupils in your Shobi class currently. And you can either do it at a teacher pace, 
so with the class whilst they're in front of you, or you can opt for instant feedback and they can work on it at home in their own time. The Socrative app allows teachers to design, create and share quizzes. We use these as daily low stake retrieval practice tasks to assist young people in gaining confidence when applying new knowledge. The Socrative app then gives staff an overview of class results where you can quickly pick up on any class wide misconceptions or young people who need more support. You can also download an Excel summary or PDF of individual class results. Once you've ended a quiz, you can also distribute individual reports to each young person with the touch of one button. The young people then receive a personalised feedback report, which they can use to identify areas for improvement. I hope that's given you a quick overview of all the reasons why our young people and staff love using Showbe combined with Socrative. Hi there, this is how we use groups on Showbe for extracurricular activities at Kings Park Secondary School. So our string teacher, Miss Alexander, has utilised this feature throughout lockdown and continues to use it just now for her teaching. Through lockdown, it was brilliant as she was able to use the um, chat function to continue the ensembles online, which was just brilliant for our pupils. Um, and now she uses it to share all the music with our pupils. So you can see all the music is in here in the different groups. So this is the string quartet. Um, so they're able to access everything in the one place. It means that there's no faff for losing music or not bringing it with them. The Scottish music sets and the Scottish groups she shares with all of her pupils. Um, and that's just where every piece of music that they play is. And it's all kind of categorised. You can see pupils are able to um, send different messages and chat to the teacher on there as well. Sometimes there are messages, yeah, you can see at the top there, have I missed my lesson, your lesson's just now, and all these sorts of things. So that's how we use groups at Kings Park Secondary School. Our showbe journey began in August 21. It started in Primary 7 with classes, assignments and folders. Staff can quickly provide instructions, give work and assign feedback. Teachers can quickly correct work and pupils can mark up corrections. Just can add a range of learning and teaching resources. They can add new documents, photos and import files. Next, it was the turn of our Primary 4 to Primary 7's class to provide homework via Shobi. Quickly moved on to adding portfolios to keep our parents up to date with their pupils' achievements. Finally, using the AR features of Apple technology in Shobi, we can take our learning outside the classroom and allow our learners to imagine endless possibilities. Our Shobi journey continues. When the rollout of the iPads first took place, we were looking at easy ways we could use to try and engage the pupils in using the iPads. And in the maths department, we decided that we would roll out our homework on the iPads initially using the Shobi app. Once we began to use the Shobi app, we realised how useful it could be. And during this happened before lockdown. During lockdown, then this became our main resource for engaging pupils in lessons during the day. All our work was posted in Shobi. Homework was posted in Shobi. Small weekly tests were posted on Shobi and the pupils were easily able to do the work, take photographs of it and return it to us for marking in Shobi. This is all done very easily and it's very user friendly. There is also a facility for parents to access Shobi codes so that they can see what their children are doing work-wise, homework-wise and they can look at the feedback that the teacher is sending them. These are all my classes here. So if I look at my fourth year class here, so these are various topics we have done this session so far. And if I take you into the weekly tests, we've done a couple of weekly tests and take you into week two, which is this week. I'm going to choose a pupil here, Logan. So Logan got, this is Logan's weekly test. Not a great one this week. 
So I've marked it here, 38%, and I've told him he needs to revise certain indices, and that was last week's home learning topic. Now, if I come out of the class and go back to my classes and my groups and go into the home study group, go in here, there's a video, question sheet and answers on indices, one of the topics he needs to um, revise before his prelim, and there's studs, same thing, there's a video, there's a worksheet, and there's the answers to the worksheet. So everything's there, the feedback's there, there's direction as to where he can get some additional help, and this is followed up with um, support study in the school, face to face, for anyone that needs extra help. Following our maths department's successful use of Shobie and pupil engagement using Shobie, it was really important for us at Springburn Academy to make sure we continued this successful engagement across the whole school. We did this in a consultation with pupils, parents and staff and successfully rolled out the use of Shobie in all our departments. Following the positive promotion of Shobie that pupils enjoyed, it was important that our pupil digital leaders were on board and they did this presenting to parent councils on the use of Shobie and what it could do to help pupils learn. This then followed from that a parent Shobie code where pupils, parents and teachers could liaise and get together and continue to share learning on this platform and it's something that will continue in Springburn Academy today and continues successfully to allow pupils, parents and staff to work together to share and record and enjoy continued engagement and learning. Hola, we are learning to greet people in Spanish. <laughs> Hola. Hola. ¿Qué tal? Así, así. ¿Y tú? Mal. ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo Marín. Gracias. Adiós. Hasta luego. During our digital music lessons, we have been developing our timing, editing, creativity, teaching our work, and teamwork. We created our own compositions, learned to edit sounds, and, and learned to change tempo using a metronome. At Summer Primary, the P7s have been using the Kino app to show our presentations about climate change on COP26. Using Kino is really useful for adding photos and graphics to our slideshows. One of my favourite functions on the Kino app is the paintbrush. You can change the background colour on gradient, which is the start colour and the end colour. the tools that I've been using on my iPad to help me to take part in much as it. Speak selection function to read words or sentences on the screen. She also uses the highlight tool and the lookup function to find the definition of these tricky words. gathered our knowledge using apps like Keynote, Camera, Markup and Book Creator. We mirrored our iPads onto the Apple TVs. We really enjoyed becoming teachers and sharing our learning.
and how we use seesaw as a way of setting targets. We have used our seesaw journals to set our timely targets under the headings of reading, writing, listening, talking and numeracy. We looked at what we were going to learn about for the whole term and selected targets for us to work on. Thinking about our feedback from teachers, we will then upload pictures of work that shows us we have achieved our targets. Hi from St Monica's Primary in Milton. This is how we used iPads and technology for our P7 house captain campaign. We used our camera and iMovie for editing our videos. Once we made our videos, we shared them with the whole school and once they finally finished watching our videos, they used QR codes to vote for P7 house captains. I enjoy using Joby because I can always find my folders. It helps the environment and save the teacher's time. I enjoy using Joby because I work better on the iPad and music. Using this app helps me keep motivated and I can look at the work at home as well to keep you help, uh, help me. Only dump charts videos. Only dump charts videos. Fantastic. And yeah, Killian, yeah. when we're doing our learning in this today, what could we use our iPads for? Fantastic.
As we come to the end of our DLAW conference for 2021, we would like to say a big thank you to all of our presenters. It's clear that technology and creativity can go hand in hand and improve learning for all of us. It's such an exciting time to be involved in education in Glasgow and we'd like to thank you all for being part of that journey. Have, Have a great, great day. day.